I love Duet 3D printer control boards and RepRap firmware. I put them into every single modified printer that I plan on keeping. So three of those examples in the background here. And what you're gonna notice is that none of those printers has a touchscreen interface or even the old click wheel LCD display interface. So there is no interface at these printers themselves. And that is because Duet just makes it so easy to use these printers from your computer. So you slice the file on your printer and then you wirelessly send it and you can do everything you really need to do from your computer, 95% of the time. But the problem with Duet control boards is they cost a lot of money. So if you're gonna get like an Ender 3, for instance, $175 is what I paid for this thing a couple years ago, last year, something like that. And uh, yeah, you're basically gonna double the cost of your printer just to put the control board in it. It's understandable. The control board is 50% of what makes the, the printer a good printer. But uh, yeah, it just, it gets pretty expensive, especially when you consider that the Duet Panel Due, the touch interface, which is the, the five inch version, costs um, $90. And the seven inch version costs $115. So you're tripling the cost of your printer potentially, which is, that's just getting out of hand. And why do I need a dedicated interface at each printer for that 5% of the time when I would actually find it useful to be you know, controlling the printer as I'm right there in front of it. Now, the better thing to do is to use your phone. You've got a nice Wi-Fi capability on your phone. You can log in to the printer and do most of what you need to do, but you're like squinting and zooming in and it can be kind of a pain in the butt. So the best solution that I found is to have a tablet that sits on the shelf with all of my printers. And I had one for just this purpose, but then a little over a year ago, my four-year-old son and his grandma needed to borrow it for an airplane trip and they left it on the airplane in the seat back pocket. So I've been without a tablet for many months and I really need a new one. So a couple of weeks ago when this company Dookie. Now who made Dookie in the urinal? <laughs> or Dogie? Oh, I can't get along, little Dogie. Do G reached out to me and offered for me to review their first foray into tablets. I totally agreed. I need one after all. Now, doing my research, Doogee is apparently a well-known brand in Spain where they're partnered up with the president of a football club, that would be soccer for the Americans, and also they're very established in South Asia like Thailand. So uh, even though I'd never heard of the brand, they're well-known for their ruggedized cell phones. And the case that this tablet comes wrapped in is pretty rugged as well. It's this flexible, rubbery plastic stuff that does make it appear to be pretty tough. I wouldn't feel too bad about dropping this from a reasonable height. The aluminum construction looks about as good as it comes. I don't have a hardness tester, so I can't be scratching the screen. Here's the front facing camera, and you can see that it comes with a protective film already installed. I would be seriously surprised if this had Gorilla Glass. But even if I wanted to put this in my pocket, I couldn't. So I don't think it's ever going to have an opportunity to get scratched. As far as acting like a stand, the case can kind of flop to the back there and it stands up like that. Longevity wise, I don't know how long the hinge will stand up to this sort of a, a use case. You can fold it into a triangle and set it on the table like that, which gives you a slight angle. You see that? But it's, um, if that was a keyboard, it would be nice, but I don't know how much more usability that gives it. This is obviously the most useful orientation for it. Works great, but it's not foolproof. It can sort of flop like that. Listen up, everyone. We've become complacent in the community. Not since the Radium Girls has their... So there's two speakers, one here and one there, that give you some nice stereo sound coming out the bottom or the top or however you have the tablet situated. The power button is right here and then the volume control is just above that. The implementation of Android 12 seems to be flawless. Now the only question is, what's running on the back end that I don't know about? All right, here on the doogee.cc website, tablet, and we can see a price listed of $299. It takes you to their AliExpress store where it's listed for $190 or possibly $148. And previously it was $120. So I don't know if the price is just going up because or if it will go up and down, but yeah, maybe get on this sooner than later. The specs on this thing are pretty good. That display looks really nice to my eyes here in person. Pretty good battery, 15 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage.
Here on walmart.com, we can see 64 gigabytes of storage on a Galaxy Tab A8 will cost you about the same price. But the Galaxy Tab A8 here was released a year ago and the 64 gigabyte version only has four gigs of RAM versus 15 on this tablet here. But what do you do on a tablet that has 128 gigabytes of storage and 15 gigabytes of RAM? The only thing I can think of is you record a whole lot of video or something like that. So let's take a look at this camera. This is the front facing one that I'm recording on and this is the quality that you can expect from both the microphone and the camera. This is the same test on the rear facing camera. Let's see how this one does. Now I recorded my cat earlier in a semi low light environment and the result was pretty choppy. But here's the thing about cameras in portable electronics these days. It's all about the software. They're doing amazing things on the back end with the image processing in the phones or the tablets themselves. So if you get a genuine Apple or I'm using a Google Pixel here, the image processing is where it's at. Just the stock Android 12 here, the camera that comes with that software that these guys can download for free, I think. Uh, it's not going to be anything close to what you get from a name brand. So don't buy this tablet if you need a good camera. Most important of all, my cat really seems to like this tablet and that is saying something because she doesn't even chase laser pointers. I tried installing this Google Fi SIM card that I had just to see if it was compatible. Google Fi network is not compatible with a lot of devices and this was no different. Depending on your carrier, you may or may not get cellular service to work. You want to see what's going on with the printer's kitty cat? They're right here. So let's put this fantastic little tablet to work here running the print farm. Not a real print farm, just three printers that I pulled out of the main pole barn. They're dusty, they need to be cleaned, but hey, for the purposes of demonstration, they'll work just fine. And we can just run a compensation. Let's do a G32 and watch the printer go through the motions. So this is now controlling all the printers. I could log in to each and every one of them. We could go to here, jobs, and send one of these jobs to, uh, the, to the printer and start printing. Or I could calibrate the printer, which is actually what I do when I'm needing to access the printer controls standing at the printer. So I can do all of the work for the printer right here, easy peasy. But here's the hard part. 192.168.29.116 is the address that I have to have memorized in order for the tablet here to be able to control the little Delta printer. So instead of memorizing that, I'm just gonna click on the three dots, scroll down here to add to home screen and call it Q5 Delta add. Anyway, you can see it's now added here to the home screen. So all I have to do is touch that and I'm logged in. All right, we got the D4 turned on, so let's log into that printer now. D4 Pro, let's home this printer. And let's put this one on the desktop as well. There it is. We need to talk about just how wonderfully functional easy to use and groundbreaking duet control boards and RepRap firmware are. They get it right, they really do. Did you guys know that the precursor to what we call input shaping on Clipper, you know that thing that everybody just loves to talk about? Well, the precursor, the more primitive version of that was available on duet control boards long before we had that functionality in Clipper. And now you can get full on input shaping on your Duet control boards running RepRap firmware. So they really are the best. The hardware is just rock solid, designed for the idiots, me. <laughs> I've burned up one and they prevented me from burning up many other control boards. So uh, they've just, they thought of everything that they could possibly think of. They've really gone and dotted every I, crossed every T. There's, there's fewer pitfalls and they are expensive for that reason. But I'm just like everybody else, I like to save my money and three screens, even the five inch screens with that tiny little bit of real estate at 
90 bucks a pop plus shipping we're looking at like 300 dollars just for these three printers in the print farm behind me versus 200 dollars, which is the price of this doji tablet now speaking of that you might be able to get it for 147 dollars. i don't know i'll put a link down below see what you can get it for but at any rate it looks way cheaper than every other tablet with specs that are anything similar so i think it's a total deal especially if you're going to be running your there's just lots of money being saved here but you don't need Duet control boards to use a tablet. You can certainly still have a tablet to control all of your printers if you're running Octoprint. Or, I don't know, maybe there'll be Chinese versions of Octoprint on those printers coming out here in the near future. I think the Bamboo Labs printer is also controllable in a similar way. So uh, a tablet, if you have more than one printer, is probably the winning strategy. All right, these are my Patreon supporters. I love you guys. You're the reason I keep making videos. Thank you so much, and thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye. I'm the YouTube algorithm. You should subscribe to Design Prototype Test, ring the all bell, and become a fiscal supporter by clicking on the links. As your benevolent overlord, I'm telling you that it will make your life better. Rather than allowing me to keep force feeding you mass audience, vacuous content, you'll actually be shown the interesting stuff that most people miss.